I'm working in a big industry, in a company that has more than 30,000 employees, and I'm getting 100 emails per day that all need to be processed. It's not spam mail or something. It's about 2,000 emails per month. But if you put it in another context or in other words, on an average workday with eight hours, I'm getting every five minutes a notification that a new email was incoming. I know people, they have more than 1,000 or 2,000 emails in their inbox, all unread. And I tell you what, this is in your mind. This will stay in your mind. While you want to work focused, you always have this feeling in your back that you are missing things, tasks maybe in this inbox you are missing and so on. And even if you are saying, no, I don't think about my inbox while I'm working there, it will stay in the back of your mind and it will grind your gears. Uh, so it was very important for me to find ways to stay on top of my email inbox and to get back into control of my emails coming in. So I will tell you all the rules I apply for my Inbox Zero. It's a combination of uh, getting things done from David Allen, but also from the four hour work week from Tim Ferriss. But I also will show you the tools I'm using to get control over my inbox and have an Inbox Zero every single day. Hey everyone and welcome to the Paperless Movement channel. I'm Tom Solid and I research the best hardware and software solutions you need to digitize your life to become more productive at work and in your home office so you have more time for the things that really matter to you. And today it's a very important topic for myself and I'm sure for you out there as well. It is the email overwhelm. So in order for the things to work these are the rules you need to apply even before thinking about using any tools to get control of it. Because if you don't have the right rules in place and right workflows, how you handle your inbox, no tool can help you to get control over your inbox. Rule number one, fixed email processing times. Instead of constantly checking your inbox and, say, and trying to get rid of some emails, answer emails and so on, just save your time blocks. For me, it's two times 30 minutes per day where I'm blocking the time in my calendar. And actually people can't invite me into meetings in this time. It is completely safe to handle emails. Oh, what about the emails, you know, they take already 30 minutes to handle. Okay, that's the other rules you need to apply now. So here's how to process your emails. So first of all, you get rid of your chunk, the calendar invites, newsletters and system notifications. So these are all the emails you can process very quickly. So for example, the calendar invites you can handle very quickly or newsletters. If you're not interested, go and unsubscribe from these newsletters. No need to get information that you are not interested in. They're just in your mind or system notifications. If you know that these system notifications are not of interest for you or just don't have no impact on your work, just filter them out. In Gmail, for example, but also on Outlook, you can set filters for each email coming in from this email address from certain system notifications and you can filter them out. Be careful if you use only the email because there might be some important emails coming in. Then you maybe think about focusing on the subject line and find some keywords in there. Next, check the emails that you can answer now. If it is just a short answer that takes you two minutes or less, just reply instantly and you are, it is out of your mind. And that's why you can focus in this 30 minutes blocks to answer these emails. And emails that you know it will take you longer than two minutes to answer, just making tasks out of them. That's the thing. You don't need to process them now. There is not such a thing like urgent emails. People will call you or come into your office if there's really something urgent. You can prioritize these emails and you can make a task and you say, okay, Maybe I have a time slot later today, or I have a time slot tomorrow morning. Then you can make this task and answer it tomorrow. Just imagine you're on holiday 
and it's a very specific topic, there's urgency going on. The person who is there for you answering these emails has no answer to this, so it will lie there anyway until you are back. So just keep this back in mind when you get emails called urgent and so on. You will lose time to handling your own tasks that might become urgent on the next day then because you're overdue. That's all for rule number one. So the important key message here is just add time blocks into your email calendar. And here's a little advice. Don't choose every day the same time frame on the same time. If you put this every day, people who are seeking for slots to meet you will figure that out. They will think, ah, every day there's the same meeting in there. So people will just send you invites anyway and maybe there are five people on there and then you get in a tour struggle and say oh well it's just processing my emails um, so I can go to this meeting anyway and then you are back into the wrong loop. My advice is to choose different times for each day so it is more randomly or it's, it's looking more randomly over the day. But now let's go to rule number two and this is switch off your email notifications. You don't want to have incoming emails popping up on your screen. It's so interrupting. Also, if you're in meetings, you know, you're showing people something, it's popping up there and also switch it off on your phone. I would even say, if it is possible for you, delete the email app on your iPhone. You don't need it because if you have to fix email processing times and you know, you're working in your office or your home office, you will be on your desktop or on your laptop where you can process these emails. I know this is hard because we are used to, you know, being in the loop and get all the information and it is nothing more ugly than people calling you, oh, uh, didn't you see my email? It was urgent and so on. Yeah then they should call you. I get no information about incoming emails at all, except when I'm just looking actively if there are new emails coming in and that's what I do in these time slots. So now I will show you what tools I use and how I, how I process all these emails. So let's say that's uh, the email incoming, yeah? So in my case, I'm using Gmail in this case. And what the Gmail also allows, if you're using the G Suite, you can have a sidebar now where you can have Google Keep. What I use it for is to keep things in mind. So if I read an email where I know this information might be handy, having it uh, a week from now in another situations, I will just put it into Google Keep and in a new note, there will be also a link back to the email that it is referring to. So as soon as I process this email and got the information I need from it into my Google Keep, I processed it, so it's finished and I archive it. Okay, the next thing I told you already is emails that take less than two minutes. I will process directly into in Gmail, answer it and archive it as well. Okay, but what about the emails that take longer than two minutes? And I want to create a task to really work on the answer for this email. I will use Todoist as an app. Why? Because Todoist has the best Gmail integration in my opinion. And as soon as you, as you tap onto the Todoist button inside Gmail, a new task will be created using the subject line and it will also link back into your email that it, you created the task from. So this is just giving me a peace of mind when I know this task I have no time to do now and I need it next week or within a month even and this task is popping up and maybe the subject line doesn't tell me even something. I just simply can tap onto the task and it will go into Gmail and open up the email and I'm ready to go. So here for tasks. However, now at my work as a team leader now, so I have to manage the task inside the team and projects and so on. In my opinion, Todoist is perfect for a freelancer or something like that. It has an awesome Google Calendar integration. And also in there, it is a two-way sync, which means if I change anything inside the calendar, like the time of the task I want to process, it will also change the time in my, in my task. Or if I change the headline in Google Calendar, it will change it into Doist and the other way around. And that's why I think 
Todoist and Google Calendar is the perfect combination. And this is also why it's a shame that I need now to use another app for my team. Yeah, because Todoist is not good enough, in my opinion, for teams. Of course, you can invite people and assign tasks and so on. But it's just, in my, as I always say, it's a list to tick off because the tasks disappear and then it's over. You have no overview of your projects and timelines missing and there's no Kanban and blah, blah, blah. So I'm using now Asana for my team. Asana has also Gmail integration. However, it is not as good, by far not as good as the Todoist integration. There's no choice. I'm still using Todoist and this combination and so on for my private stuff. Let's say private task and work tasks uh, into Asana. Okay. And now I was talking about Google Keep, but this is just, you know, have information handy. Yeah. So, this is more like a stream because you have all the posts on the site then and you can just, you know, go back to it. But what's what I'm using, uh, if I really have to save information, this is using Evernote. And why Evernote? Because it has an awesome web clipper, the Google Chrome extension from Evernote, a web clipper. And if you're inside Gmail and you just press on clip, this website, it will recognize that there is an email and it will take out all the text you, you need and so on for this as well. But uh, I'm not using it for my work because for compliance reasons, I can save, you know, in Evernote because it's using a different cloud service. Here, when I'm, it is linked back to my Gmail, it's just a link to my own Gmail work account. And the thing is, if, the, if you are not uh, logged in into your Gmail account, you won't be able to read it. So it's no problem having the link back to my email in here. But in this case, I will store information inside Evernote. So that's also a reason why I'm using more and more Google Keep because it's provided also by my company to use on our own servers and Evernote is an external server. So I don't spare a save this there. But for my primary emails and for example, for paperless movement and so on, if I get interest in emails or newsletters, I'm using this extension and it will be saved in Evernote. And just recently I saw that uh, Notion got a great web clipper as well and it also works with gmail now so that's the same thing now for notion and notion is really getting better and better and i really keep a close eye on notion because it's much nicer to create notes or wikis inside notion rather than evernote where you can, in my opinion just throw things in okay that's it that's how i handle my email inbox and how I have Inbox Zero every day. Just recap, first of all, the two rules I applied, having fixed times per day where I just process my emails by certain sub rules like answer emails that take two minutes or less, make tasks out of emails that take longer than two minutes and get rid of the junk before you even start processing it. And the second rule was switch off the notifications. Don't think about your emails during the day while you're working on your tasks and so on. Just go into your email at these specific times. Of course, if you have to look up something, then hopefully this information is already in one of these systems, either in your Google Keep or in your Evernote or in your Notion or wherever. If you want to stay up to date on the latest ways to integrate paperless technology into your daily life, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. And I'm looking forward to having you next time.